Well, today we continue our message series that I'm calling uh, Selfless, which is basically this message series about uh, the new year and New Year's resolutions and those kinds of things. That we should start to turn our New Year's resolutions, instead of being inherently self self selfish, to make them more selfless. Now, you'll also notice that uh, throughout this message series, each one of these uh, messages correlates with uh, the vows that we all take as members of the United Methodist Church to uh, uh, be uh, Christians and, and support the ministries by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Each of these things uh, are addressed as we go through this message series. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, grateful in all, basically grateful in all things all circumstances. In other words, giving all the glory to God. And in this case, we're be, we'll be addressing the whole idea of prayer and how prayer is a very important part of our lives. In fact, the common thread throughout this whole series is that we should live what we believe. It's all about truly living out our everyday lives, the things that we profess. And so far, we've taken a look at several issues, and we started out by talking about let your faith show as you're being a bold witness. We also talked about let your faith serve as we serve others around us. We also talked about uh, let your faith be a blessing in the way we generously give. And, uh, and today we're talking about let your faith seek God above all things. <sighs> Prayer is basically what we're talking about today. Prayer is the overarching thing of uh, this whole message. Uh, prayer is really going to be the focus. Now, uh, you've heard me talk about prayer on many occasions. I've preached on prayer at many different times. Uh, today, I would like us to sort of back up and get a running start at the whole idea of prayer. Kind of start with the basic concepts and then push our way forward into what uh, uh, God, I believe, really wants from us in our own prayer life. First of all, let's start out with uh, some very basic, basic ideas, and that is the idea that basically when you boil it down to it, prayer is communicating with God. Are you with me on this so far? Pre I, I, can, I can see people say, yes, of course, we know this, but I told you I'm, getting, I'm backing up and getting a running start. So prayer is basically communicating with God, and uh, let's take that whole idea of the way we communicate on an everyday basis. Now, there are lots of different ways in which we can communicate, am I right? Come on, there are all kinds of different ways that we can communicate. Some of them are uh, significantly more subtle. Some of them are uh, a lot more intimate. Uh, some of them, we throw them out there for the world to see, including the person that we're aiming at. Uh, many times, uh, our communications are much more deep and intimate as well. For instance, uh, the, uh, one way to communicate is to, let's say you throw out a tweet or throw, put something up on Facebook. And uh, we certainly hope that the person uh, that you intend to see that sees that, but it's really kind of for public consumption. And my guess is you can also tell that some of our prayer life is like that as well, right? It can be a little bit more intimate if you, for instance, send out a, a text to someone. Uh, that is, that's a little bit more intimate, but <laughs> not really. The only difference is you're sending out to a specific person and not to everybody. Uh, you can get a little bit more intimate if you're sending out a letter or an email uh, where you compose your thoughts and send it out. You know, um, I, anyone here get letters very often from people? I mean, actual paper in the mail? Uh, not so much anymore. More, uh, but I tell you, when I do, it's a great joy. Am I right? When you see someone you have, or you get a letter from someone you haven't seen in a while. And those are all different kinds of uh, intimacy levels of prayer. You go a little bit further, and frankly, I, if I had the choice of getting a text from someone or getting a letter, I'd choose the letter. If I really wanted to be close to someone, instead of getting a letter, I'd rather talk to them on the phone, right? That way you hear their voice in real time, back and forth. So it's almost like you're communicating together. However, if I really want to get something done, real intimacy, not just sending out a memo, but really trying to get to know someone, 
I think we would all agree that the best way to do that is face to face. Am I right? How many people here would prefer face to face communication opposed to any of those others? Now, believe me, there's a time and a place for you to communicate in those other terms, right? Uh, if you work for a large corporation, you often get memos sent out to a whole bunch of people, or I wanna shoot out a text to someone to let them know I'm late, but I'm on my way. I mean, those are all appropriate. But if you really want to have an intimacy with someone, you have to push in deeper and closer. And I think a lot of those things parallel to what we're talking about in prayer. You know, there are some times where we throw out a prayer for more public consumption, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not as intimate. Sometimes you can be in small groups of people where you can be uh, praying and pushing into one another a little more deeply, and that's good too. However, if you really want to get to know God better, to have an intimate communication with your Lord and Savior, a lot of times that takes face to face. Now, it's true, we don't often, or we're not often face to face with our Lord and Savior. But when we truly open up our hearts, so it becomes an intimate communication, that's what we're after. And that's what we're going to be talking about mainly today, is that broad uh, scope of what prayer really is all about. Today, let's start out by talking about the idea that, that uh, we should be pushing towards deeper and a more intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And when we're talking about pushing into a deeper, more intimate relationship with Jesus, that often reflects our own prayer life, how deeply we are to push into Jesus Christ, as opposed to uh, sending out just some sort of quick prayer that would be uh, the parallel to a text. Or a lot of times, uh, some people, I had this one guy who had been a, a faithful Christian all of his life, but he hated to pray. That was just not his thing. And I, I asked him how often you pray. He says, well, I pray when I'm in church. And I pushed him a little bit more on that. I said, yeah, we pray all the time in church. And listed off all the times during the worship service when we pray. He didn't want to do that. He, 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 he felt uncomfortable with it. And as you, can, as you probably know me well enough, I pushed a little harder. Well, what's uncomfortable about that? And he ended up saying this. I feel so exposed. Ooh, isn't that something? He basically said he felt his heart exposed to God. Anyone ever feel that kind of thing? That when you're in prayer, you feel like you're exposed to God? I do all the time, but I cherish that. You know what I mean? Opposed to resisting it, we should allow ourselves to grow more intimately, deeper and deeper into Jesus Christ. One of my favorite passages of Scripture uh, regarding this, and Jesus has many issues that he addresses in prayer, but when we're talking about the difference between intimacy and prayer and distance from prayer, the story uh, that I read earlier is a prime example between the Pharisee and the tax collector about the way they prayed. It, Jesus says uh, the, the, the Pharisee stood by, stood by himself and prayed, and the implication there is he stood out in front of every everybody and most likely prayed out loud saying God I thank you that I'm not like these other people and the implication there is thank you God that I am better than all the rest of these people I mean think of the arrogance behind that even that very statement then he goes on to say like these robbers and these evildoers these adulterers or even this tax collector over in the corner yes that's right take a look at that evil man over there in fact I I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. First of all, why would anyone need to say to God, hey God, are you listening? I fast and I tithe. Did you catch that? Did you look at your records? Do you really think we need to inform God about anything? That's 
why most people believe that he spoke this out loud. He wanted to tell everybody else. Do you think that was even a prayer to God? That was one of those things that you blast out on Facebook to make yourself look better. But the story goes on. And he tells it like this. But the tax collector stood at a distance. Says he didn't even look up to heaven, but beat his breast. That's, uh, that's something that maybe some of you aren't familiar with, and that is an ancient way of, it's a symbol of repentance. In fact, in a lot of more conservative Catholic churches, when you're about ready to receive confession and communion, the beating of the breast is a symbol of a penitent, someone who is repentant. And then he said a relatively short prayer, if you know what I mean. He said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now, it's pretty clear here that Jesus says it is the tax collector and not the Pharisee who walked away justified by God. It's also pretty clear here that it was the tax collector who had a deeper intimacy with God. He spoke to God alone. He bore his soul in the very act of repentance. And when he finally spoke up to God, he said, Lord, just have mercy on me, for I'm a sinner. The Pharisee, on the other hand, I'm not even sure he was addressing God at all as much as he was addressing the crowds to make himself look better. Intimacy is one of those things that I hope that we all want to cultivate, to go deeper in our prayer life. Now, please keep in mind, all those other kinds of, uh, of examples of communication are valid forms of communication, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I'm a person who doesn't want to just communicate uh, by texts. I want to have uh, a more intimate kind of communication. And the same thing with prayer, that yes, it's okay to have uh, uh, recited prayers. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, for some people, it brings comfort. But usually that comfort harkens back to a memory opposed to growing deeper and intimate and personal with the living God. I hope each one of us has that yearning, uh, that nudging of the Holy Spirit that tries to draw us closer and deeper to God. And through prayer, we can help that process become deeper, closer, and more intimate. One of the important things that we need to also understand about uh, uh, the idea of communication and by the same form, uh, the way we pray, is that honestly, communication often requires listening as well as just speaking, right? In fact, if uh, your f method of communication is just sending out information to someone else, uh, there's very little intimacy there at all. In fact, I would doubt that the intimacy level uh, uh, is even in existence when you are the one who is simply doing all the talking and none of the listening. For heaven's sakes, I'm sure there are many of you out there who know someone where whenever you get together, they do all the talking and hardly any listening at all. Can anyone? Uh, relate to a uh, conversation like that? Sure, they just continue to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Now, there's often nothing wrong with that either. As a pastor, I, you have no idea how many times people come into my office and sit in the chairs and say, Pastor, I need some advice. Well, tell me what's going on. And next thing you know, they tell me more and more and more, and I'm just listening carefully. Sometimes I jot down notes so I don't forget something, and they tell me their whole story. And I says, you know, honestly, if I were in your position, I might think about doing something like, and oftentimes I won't even be able to speak out what I wanted to tell them. 
because they'll just say, oh, pastor, thank you so much for listening. And off they go. Is that communication? Sure it is. Yeah. Sometimes we just need to call up a friend or go out for coffee with someone and just vent. Here are the things that are really bugging me. You're really not looking for any advice. You just need a listening ear, right? And as a pastor, I'm a listening ear to all kinds of people, and that's fine and good and dandy. And believe me, if you just want to vent out your frustrations at God from time to time, he's a really good listener too. But that doesn't mean you're growing in intimacy and deep communication with God. That kind of deep communication with God often comes from us listening to what God is trying to say to us. Oftentimes we need to hear what God is trying to speak into our lives. Now it's true. Not always do we hear a literal voice. So sometimes uh, we need to be a little bit more attuned to what God is saying. For instance, in this passage uh, where Jesus is praying to God himself, I think you may have heard this before. It's the story of Jesus right before he was arrested in the garden with his disciples off uh, by themselves, and Jesus goes off on his own. The story goes like this uh, from Matthew's account. It says, going a little further, in other words, leaving his disciples behind, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed. Now listen to this kind of prayer that Jesus makes. It says, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. He didn't need to explain to God all the things that are happening. God, I had this really bad day. Now they're going to try to kill me and all that. Can you please keep them from killing me? Basically saying, if it is possible for this cup, this death, to be taken from me, but it's not about me, Lord. It's all about you. Then he goes off and talks to his disciples, and this is how he came back. When he went away a second time, and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. I know what you might be thinking. I'm not sure I want to get that intimate and close to God if I say, okay, God, uh, is, is this something that I need to endure? And God answers, yes, it is. But sometimes we hear God's word. We hear his voice. We know what he wants us to do, and we just don't like it. Oftentimes it's not to the point of death, okay? Okay. Oftentimes, it's to the point of you need to humble yourself, make amends, repent. A lot of the times when the Lord kind of takes a small two-by-four and whacks me across the head, the impression is, you're really not asking my advice, are you? Because you already know what you should be doing. You're trying to convince yourself not to do it. we need to start to open up our hearts, our minds, to the movement of God's Spirit. When we pray, we also need to be able to receive what God has to offer. And our prayer life should not just simply be a long list of requests, but a, a desire for us to become more close and intimate with God. I know you have heard me say this dozens and dozens of times since I've been here, that I often encourage people to pray with their palms open. And that, I know that's way deeply out of your comfort zone for many of you, but at the same time, the reason is, I'm not doing that just to give you something to do. The reason is it's a reminder to us. It's a reminder to us that we are not here just simply to send out a text message to God, but we're also here to receive what God has to offer. 
That is a way for me to say to everyone, please, as we pray, let that not just be one-way communication, but let us also receive what God has to offer. You'd be surprised how many times his answer is yes. A lot of times his answer is, let me comfort you through this. Let me bring you peace that you simply were not aware of. Let me wrap my ever-loving arms around you and bring you closer to me. Now, God can do that without your palms up, okay? But that is a reminder to us that we can receive as well. We can listen to what God has to say. We are ready to take in whatever God is so eager to pour out into our lives. But so many cases, we want to just simply tell God what to do and expect him to do it our way. Uh, here, I, I have a true story for you. I know this is a true story because I saw it on the internet, okay? You can laugh, of course, you know that this is a joke. Uh, there, was this, uh, there was this rabbi who was known, by, known in all circles as someone who had listened deeply to the word of God and always uh, listened for God's word in return. And uh, one time uh, uh, he was praying before God and he heard an announcement saying that there was a, a flash flood warning and everyone should evacuate their homes. So he opened up his front door and he noticed that there was water pouring down the street and the water kept rising and rising and rising. And he was on out on his front porch and was yelling out to God, says, God, please save me. And his next door neighbor came with one of those great big uh, four-wheel drive trucks and is plowing his way through the water. And he pulled up to the porch and says, Rabbi, hop in and we'll take you to safety. And the rabbi says, no, I'm confident the Lord will save me. The water kept rising and rising. So he ran upstairs and opened up his second story window and yelled out, Lord, please save me. And just then then uh, the police boat came by with a rescue boat, and he says, hop in, Rabbi, we'll take you to safety. He says, no, my Lord will save me. And the water kept rising and rising. And finally, he climbed up, up on the roof and leaned against the chimney and said, uh, Lord, please save me. And then a rescue helicopter came by and dropped down a line. They said, uh, hang on, Rabbi, we'll pull you to safety. And he says, uh, no, the Lord will save me. And the water kept rising and rising, finally went over his head and he was at the pearly gates. He came up to God and said, God, what's wrong with you? I've always been a faithful servant of yours. Why didn't you save me? And God said, why didn't I save you? I sent you a truck, a boat, and a helicopter. What more do you want? Now, of course, that's supposed to be funny. But at the same time, how true is that in our own lives, right? How many times is our prayer life, although that is an extreme example, follow that same pattern? Where we come before God and we ask God for our wildest dreams. And when our wildest dreams don't come true, we blame God for someone who doesn't listen. Or we blame God for saying, obviously, you're, you're uh, heartless and, and uh, compassionless if you would allow this to happen, oh God. Or worse comes to worst, there obviously cannot be a God if he allowed this to happen and didn't answer my prayer. When all the while, God is probably answering your prayer every moment. showing us examples and situations, directions that are actually better than you ever could have dreamt. In fact, I've made a joke of you. You've heard me say this time and time again. I'm so, go I'm so glad that God is not limited to my wildest dreams. But if all we think of is this is ideal, we can miss everything else around us. The key is we need to be ready to receive what God has to offer. We have to receive the answer to our deeply heartfelt prayer. 
We need to come before God and become intimate with him in a new way. Finally, we need to try to wrap our minds around something different. I think in so many ways, we think of prayer as we make our requests known to God, like a laundry list of things to say, okay, God, please do this, 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 and this. And, of course, we expect God to do those things. In fact, sometimes we get stuck in our head that if it's a really big prayer, we need to pray even harder and stronger just in case God isn't listening well. We need to change God's mind on some of these things. But instead, I'd like us to think of it this way, that prayer changes us more than prayer changes God. That oftentimes, if prayer is truly communication with God, that we should be willing to be changed by God, not to change the nature of God. Hmm. So if you are truly wanting to enter into a deep, intimate relationship with God, maybe you ought to be willing to be changed. Which brings me back to that guy I mentioned that I, that who said, I don't like to pray because I feel vulnerable. I think it's probably because he knows deep down that if I am vulnerable with God, that means that I need to, I'm the one who needs to change. Frankly, it took me a while to really wrap my mind around that. Um, that intimate, deep relationship with God. In fact, now I often express it the way, uh, that way I say it's like I, in prayer, I reach down and, sorry for the vulgarity of it all, but I rip open my chest to bear my heart to God, unprotected. Lord, here I am, completely vulnerable to you. And I tell you, that's still scary, isn't it? <laughs> As if me making myself vulnerable, God knows me better than I did before. Of course not. God doesn't need me to become vulnerable to him. But when I am vulnerable to him, I am able to change. I'm able to receive. And I'm willing to be nudged and reshaped. If I try to keep God out here at arm's length, I'm not going to change at all. That's a little safer, isn't it? And saying, I'm okay, God. <sighs> Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Here I am. I think the difference is the difference between saying, Lord, here are all the things that I want. It's almost as if we think of God like a genie. Remember uh, Aladdin and his lamp? He would rub the lamp, and next thing you know, uh, the genie would appear, and he'd have his three, magic, uh, his, his three magic wishes. It's almost as if we think that if we take our Bible and, and we rub our Bible, all of a sudden, poof, the Holy Spirit will appear, and we have our three magic miracles just to do whatever we want. It's important for us to never lose sight of the fact that God is so much more everything than we are. Not only more powerful, and we kind of, uh, we kind of expect that, we desire God to be powerful, but he's also so much more understanding. He knows everything. He also has greater wisdom, and we need to surrender to that wisdom. In our prayer life, we need to be changed to be more like God so that we can understand and pray like God. This same kind of thing happened even in the New Testament era. Remember James, the uh, brother of Jesus, he addressed it like this when he so told uh, uh, followers, he said, you desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you, uh, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you do ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives. 
that you want to spend what, got, what you get on your own pleasure. In other words, James is saying, do you really expect God to answer your prayer when you're really asking for all these selfish motives? That have nothing to do with pressing deeper to God, but getting what you want? Instead, I really love to cling to what Jesus had to say as a clue of who we are supposed to be. Frankly, this can be a confusing passage of Scripture, so I want to walk through it uh, very intentionally, okay? Jesus is about ready to be taken away, killed, die. And these are some of the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples when he was alone with them. And this comes from John chapter 14. And he says it like this. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. There are many people who have taken that same passage and decided that in order for God to answer all of our prayers, we need to ask in the name of Jesus. And still, oftentimes, we end our prayers by saying, in Jesus' name. But in many ways, I think people want to put more emphasis behind that. Maybe you've heard, in Jesus' name, as if to say, if I say the name Jesus with a lot more authority and passion, it'll happen. But that's not the thing. It's not what you speak. It's not the name of Jesus you speak. The name of Jesus is what Jesus would do. And if we are truly to be transformed, if we are to be changed in prayer, to be more like Christ, the more we're like Christ, the more we're likely to pray like Christ. Whatever you ask me to do in my name, in other words, my will, oh, if you ask in my will, Oh, I'm so eager to do it for you. Of course I will do it for you. But in order for you to ask in my name, Jesus is saying, you need to know me. You need to receive from me. And you need to be changed to be like me. Now, I want us all to understand that I think that there is no wrong way to pray. Are you with me on this? Give me a little nod. Did you hear me on that? There's no wrong way to pray. There's just different levels of intimacy. And my God, I encourage all of us to grow closer and closer and closer in our intimate walk with Jesus so that we may be more and more like him. Guess what, people? In just a couple of seconds, we're all going to pray together. Are you ready for that? And you've heard me say this many times before, that if you want to ignore me and just spend time with you and your Savior, nothing would please me more. In fact, if you want to tune me out, glory be to God. But once again, I'm going to ask you, not make anyone do anything, to come before God with a reminder that you're also here to receive. So if you would pray with your palms open, nothing mystical or magical. It's just a reminder to yourself that you are also here to receive what God has to offer. Let's pray together. Oh, most gracious and holy Lord Jesus, oh, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you, O oh Lord. And Lord, even now, I ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon each one of us in such a real and palatable way and give us the assurance, O oh Lord, beyond just head knowledge and understanding, but deep down in our hearts, give us the assurance that you really are God, that you really are here with us. You really are here to not only listen to our prayer life, but pour yourself into us as well. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. 
We adore you, O Lord. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.